Hey everyone and welcome back to another Flow Ninja video. In this one, we're gonna be going over on how you can connect HubSpot with Webflow in four different ways. So, let's jump straight into it. After working on a hundred plus uh, kind of different websites at Flow Ninja, we've discovered that there are many different ways you can kind of connect HubSpot depending on the client, the client size and then the client use case also in the end. So, we're gonna be going over the top four use cases we like to do kind of for uh, HubSpot and Webflow. And starting off from that, we're gonna be connecting it through, through the easiest method, and that is HubSpot to Zapier integration with some custom steps in between. So by going over uh, to the Zapier form here, we see that kind of the first thing we need to go ahead and do is just kind of copy over our form from here. So we have the full name, email address, company, company size, industry, pricing plans, etc, etc. Um, and the only thing we need to go ahead and worry about is making sure that our form here has the same IDs as the form in Webflow. So full name, email address, company, company size, all of these items uh, need to be uh, kind of the exact same uh, label and the label name as they are here in order for our form to kind of work properly and then I mean also to have the exact same select fields so like 1 to 50, 1 to 50, uh, 201 to 500 etc etc. Additionally uh, we found out that there are some hidden fields that we also like to be uh, added to the project itself like UTM source, UTM medium and UTM campaign. They're pretty useful for bigger clients when they have different marketing campaigns and it's always good to see that you can kind of say like let's say source Google, medium, flow, a UTM campaign millionaire like for example and then we can go to the form itself here and just see that for every single form we're gonna have all of those fields like Google flow millionaire passing to HubSpot uh, without the need for our marketing team to come two months later on and just kind of ask us do you have any idea where did our kind of leads come from we don't know which campaign is really successful this is gonna ensure that for every single form you're adding on any any website, we have this preset. These are, oh, and then additionally, you can also pass over hidden field if you wanna pass a CMS page from here with a value of the CMS slug or anything of that sort. This is functioning from the code that's been added here. So you just need to paste this in and you're gonna have the source, medium and campaign working and any other kind of location hrefs you wanna, you wanna add to the project. Additionally, we're adding custom validations to all of our forms. So you can see in this instance that if we go ahead and write a name with one letter, it's not gonna allow us to do so. If we write a name with one letter and kind of number, it's not gonna allow to do so. So I can write Urosh, I can Urosh at flow.ninja. But if I do Urosh only, it's not gonna be uh, allowing me to kind of enter a valid email address. So we have those kind of items also added to every single form. So you see this is full name, this is email, and then coming back forward here, you're gonna see that uh, we have the, let me just see here, full name ID, we have email ID, and then we're adding that the required is true, that the length is three and that letters are true. And then same here for the email one, um, the, kind of you can do the same thing. You can multiply this as many times as you want to, and you can also add custom messages uh, to specify your name, uh, to specify a valid email address, and just kind of to specify what do you want to write here when somebody doesn't write the correct name on that front. Then the final thing we have is applying the select, uh, kind of nice select field. So you see here that for all the select fields, we're going to be applying the nice select field. So we just have some additional scripts on, on the top um, in order, to, the first one is to validation, the, ne the next one is for selecting, and this one is for uh, styling the input errors and the label errors and how do they look like. Additionally, you're going to be finding uh, here, select styles, let me pull it out here, that you're going to be able to see all of the styles we've used for select fields. So you can specify those and you're gonna change how they look like and make sure they look kind of exactly as you want them to look like on your side. But let's do and finalize the form here. So we have, thank you for submitting the form. The next step uh, is going to Zapier and connecting through Zapier, Webflow and HubSpot. The thing that many people forget is that you actually need to submit a form on Webflow in order for Webflow to actually kind of push, push it to Zapier and then for Zapier to be able to recognize it. I've kind of scratched my head a million of times why doesn't the form from Webflow show up in, uh, kinda in Zapier. And that's why you first need to submit a form on Webflow in order for the form on Zapier to work. So by going to and uh, creating a new Zap, we're gonna be choosing Webflow. Trigger event is gonna be form submission. We're gonna be choosing the account and that's gonna be our Webflow account here. We're gonna be setting up the trigger. 
in that side side we are going to be finding our website we're going to be finding our form that we submitted and that we want to use for this project and then finally we're going to just kind of go ahead and test the trigger let me test the trigger and see the submission from uh, that has the source medium whatever uh, then uh, we are going to need to go ahead and create um, a new form in hubspot so if i go back to all forms leave it unpublished changes we can create a new form but we've already created one of the forms here on our side and we're going to just go ahead and edit that so we have full name email company name in the select fields we have the exact same select fields as in webflow in industry we have the exact same industries as in webflow um, in plans we have the exact same labels here as in webflow additionally we've also added a utm source medium campaign um, to the properties here so uh, afterwards, we're gonna go ahead to our uh, kind of plan here. We're gonna uh, kind of create a form submission, uh, create a form submission, the account. We're gonna choose our account, and then we're just gonna go ahead and fill in everything. We're gonna fill in the full name, email, company name, company size, industry, pricing plan, UTM source, medium campaign, and kind of anything else needed on that front. And then the final thing is just to go ahead and retest and continue. We saw that everything was just published, so. Uh, retest and review bam that's sent uh, we can go ahead and turn on the zap zap and then the final thing that i like to always do is go ahead and go back to all forms uh, we need to go ahead and see uh, which are kind of details which submissions do we have so let's go ahead to submissions we can see that i've just submitted this on april 6th so we can go ahead and see uh, kind of the submission and just see is everything from the submission that we actually need for that client uh kind of added so we have uh pro we have the google we flow millionaire pro digital design company size flow ninja and rochet um, um gmail.com and that's why we see kind of that everything is working and we can proceed to kind of continue using this with our client the thing you need to notice is um, that when using something like this Ideally, you're never going to be publishing the website on only on one domain so that we don't have any problems. I suggest you that uh, kind of you keep the website published uh, both on the staging domain and the main domain. So just that we can have form submissions going as smoothly as possible and that we don't have any errors on that front. That's what, just what we found because Zapier from time to time can have an error or something on that front. So basically we've just wrapped up integrating our zapier form uh, kind of our hubspot form with zapier and this can be done kind of for any of our clients is the easiest is the cheapest way to go ahead and do it uh, but it's gonna have some problems with from time to time if you're downloading some ebooks if you're downloading some uh, white papers it's gonna require some logic either on the hubspot end or changing some of the items on the webflow end and that's why we have all of the other kind of examples like uh, uh, raw HTML forms, action links, and then the enterprise integration itself. So, uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.